morning everybody, it's Eric from EP Autos, again your uh, libertarian car guy, and I'm here to de deliver or unbosom uh, another pro-liberty rant. Uh, today I'd like to talk about something that really gets to the heart of the problems uh, that uh, we have here in America, and it is this notion of um, presumptive guilt. And I'd like to tie that into a very concrete example, uh, something that most of us have to deal with almost every year um, that really brings the point home. And it's vehicle inspections. The assumption is that if Smith, for instance, uh, is too reckless or irresponsible to keep track of his vehicle, he lets his tires get bald, um, he doesn't uh, pay attention to his brakes, uh, his vehicle isn't safe to operate, then presumptively, uh, Jones, who does take care of his car, must also be assumed to be incompetent, reckless, negligent, and compelled to take his vehicle in for uh, an inspection on his nickel, wasting his time, even though Jones knows perfectly well, being a conscientious person, that he takes good care of his vehicles, he makes sure that his tires have plenty of tread, he makes sure that his brakes are serviced when they need servicing. Uh, he's competent to do all of these things, so therefore, in his mind, uh, and in fact, he knows that it's an absolute waste of his time and money to be compelled to go into a state inspection. But nonetheless, he must, on the premise that uh, Smith has, has acted negligently or irresponsibly. This theme runs through everything, unfortunately, that's wrong with the country today. Uh, I'll give you another example uh, that's exactly the piece. Um, which I constantly go back and forth with, uh, with the, uh, the troll known as Clover over at epautos.com, who's uh, an archetypical statist, collectivist kind of a guy. Anyway, he defends these random sobriety checkpoints, which again presume that everybody going through those checkpoints is a drunk until they prove otherwise, completely upending one of the most ancient bedrock principles of Western civilization, and of our formerly free country, which is that each individual must be presumed to be not guilty until he is in fact proved guilty of having done something. And more to the point, before you even get to that point, um, there must be some reason for suspecting the individual uh, of having done something. Thus, in the past, before we had these dragnet style sobriety checkpoints, if a, if a cop witnessed somebody driving erratically, uh, wandering across a double yellow, slowing down, speeding up, or any other tangible objective evidence that this person was impaired, whether by alcohol or senility or some other reason. Well, at that point, that particular individual had given the cop probable cause, reasonable suspicion uh, to believe that that particular individual had done something or was about to do something illegal, and not just illegal, but wrong. It's wrong to drive when you're impaired. And uh, at that point, that individual would be uh, pulled over by the cop for further investigation. And I don't think that any reasonable person, including a libertarian, would have any issue with that, because a person who is clearly and objectively not in control of their car, uh, as uh, indicated by wandering across the double yellow and, and, and randomly speeding up and slowing down and so on, well, that person is giving tangible evidence that they're a threat to other people, and, and of course also to themselves. But then something happened, and this began in the 80s. We started having these dragnet style random sobriety checkpoints where they would just block off a stretch of road and every single driver who happened to be out on that particular road would be forced with the implicit threat of violence uh, to stop and submit to an inspection and interrogation, no matter how cursory, the fact is you're stopped and compelled to submit to a visual inspection, uh, an interrogation, and a presentation of your papers without even a scintilla, without even a suggestion, an allegation that you as an individual have given some reason for a reasonable person to suspect that perhaps uh, you might have uh, been guilty of consuming alcohol while driving or having drugs in your system or some other thing. Again, it's this concept of presumptive guilt that has come to just define American society. To go to the airport today, 
every single traveler, including little children, old people in wheelchairs, is treated as a presumptive terrorist, even when it's manifestly clear there's no reason to suspect them of anything at all. Nonetheless, uh, they are compelled, required to submit to interrogations, to invasions of their personal space, to searches of their persons and their property for absolutely no reason other than this notion of presumptive guilt and that we are no longer innocent until proved guilty, but rather we are guilty until we prove ourselves innocent to the satisfaction of uh, an official of the government, an agent of the state. It's a loathsome doctrine, but it's a very subtle one, and it's one that unthinking people or thoughtless people are very easily lulled into because of the superficial utilitarian appeal. For example, uh, Clover uh, over at ethiautos.com fixates on this business of dangerous drunks, and most people are sympathetic with the idea of getting drunk drivers off the road. Nobody defends drunk driving. Um, but he can't see the proverbial forest for the trees, that it's, it's not that we libertarians or people who object to these presumptive guilt policies are in favor of drunk driving or any other harmful thing like that that involves tangible, actual threat or harm to other real people. It is this idea uh, of treating everybody as a criminal. I, the other day, pointed out to Clover, we don't presume yet that everybody is a potential murderer or rapist until presumed until, until they demonstrate to the satisfaction of a cop that in fact they haven't killed anybody and they haven't raped anybody. But really at this point, it's not that far of a hop, skip and a jump to the point where we'll be in that position where cops will just randomly knock on people's doors uh, and come into our homes for inspections because after all, you can think of a myriad of possibilities. Uh, you might have grandpa chained in the basement, for example, and you might be, uh, you, you, you might be doing all sorts of things that are illegal, might, might, might illegal or wrong, but uh, the standard used to be that there had to be proof, or at least there had to be strong evidence that would indicate to a reasonable person that a specific individual had done something or was about to do something uh, illegal and uh, harmful to other people. And that's what we've lost sight of in America, in our hysteria post 9-11, and in fact it goes, it goes back farther than that, the, the sobriety checkpoints are something that preceded the so-called war on terror and all of that by many, many years. It's unfortunately uh, something that's been latent in American, in the American psyche, if you will, um, at least as long as I've been alive. Uh, and it's something that needs to be rooted out uh, for the cancer that it is because it is profoundly, profoundly, philosophically, ethically, morally at odds um, with the idea of a free country. You cannot be free if you are not free from suspicion when you've done nothing, if you've done absolutely nothing to warrant suspicion uh, of criminal wrongdoing, then by God, you should be free to go about your business. You should be free to say no thank you to a cop, uh, and the cop should be legally powerless to interfere with you in any way, again, unless you, as a specific individual, have given him a reason that can be brought up before a third party, as in court, for example, to back up his suspicion, not just because he doesn't like the way you look or because you're a certain color or you're profiled in some other way or just for no reason at all, as is the case with these sobriety checkpoints, the, the TSA buggery that we're forced to put up with now, uh, and all the rest of it. It's got to stop if we want to have a free country again. It's got nothing to do with safety. If anything, it's absolutely the opposite. Uh, our, our, we're being sold this notion that we're more safe as a result of being uh, subjected to the whim of arbitrary, limitless government. The fact of the matter is that these terrorists present uh, a virtually nil threat to us as individuals. I like to say that the real terrorists are in Washington and in the state capitals and all the other halls of government, these advocacy groups and elsewhere. These are the ones who are taking away your freedoms and, and having armed strangers uh, interfere with your life for absolutely no reason. Uh, and that's what's got to stop. Uh, that's why America needs to come to its senses and get back to dealing with people who've done something and leave everybody else alone. Anyway, uh, that's the conclusion of my rant on uh, the subject of presumptive guilt. Um, I hope you will uh, leave your comments pro or con. Excuse me if I'm a little bit mush mouth today. I've got this, uh, I, I've got a, got a problem with my, uh, I've got a little tooth pain and it's making me talk a little bit funny, so apologies for that. 
anyway um, please come down to epautos.com and leave your comments pro or con also please submit to us uh, your videos of terrible drivers and we'll be happy to post them for you on the site uh, also over at clover clovercam.com and the final thought for the day is we do have uh, new stickers now if you'd like to uh, join the ep autos army and get your anti-clover sticker uh, please check out the website uh, we'll be happy to take care of that for you the stickers are free to any person uh, who donates ten dollars or more to help support the site or who signs up for a recurrent five dollar a month uh, donation to help keep the wheels turning so we'll catch up with you next time and thanks for listening